You aren't what you drive. They believe that financial independence is more important than displaying high social status. Mr. W.W. Allen is a self-made multimillionaire. He and his wife have lived in the same three-bedroom house in the same middle-class neighborhood for nearly 40 years. Mr. Allen owns and manages two manufacturing businesses in the Midwest. During his entire married life, he has owned only full-size General Motors sedans. He will tell you that he never burdened himself with status vehicles or products of any kind. Mr. Allen's business, as well as his household, are highly efficient operations. The productivity of his businesses, coupled with his household's moderate consumption habits, produce many surplus dollars. These, in turn, were reinvested in his business, commercial real estate, and the common stocks of a variety of high-quality American corporations. Mr. Allen is what we call a super paw. His net worth exceeds the expected value for people in his income age category by more than tenfold. During the course of his career, Mr. Allen has helped many other entrepreneurs. He has acted as a mentor to dozens of business owners and has saved many businesses from going under by giving financial assistance to struggling entrepreneurs. but he never extended credit to people who exhibited the big hat, no cattle philosophy. In his mind, such people would never be able to repay their debts. These types, according to Mr. Allen, spend, spend, spend in anticipation of having money before they even earn it. Mr. Allen, as well as those people who has, whom he has backed financially, have never felt that their purpose in life was to look wealthy. According to Mr. Allen, that's why I am fin financially independent. If your goal is to spend, become financially secure, you'll likely attain it. But if your motive is to make money to spend money on the good life, you're never going to make it. Many people who never achieve financial independence have a much different set of beliefs. When we ask them about their motives, they speak in terms of work and career. But ask them why they work so hard, they why they selected the careers they did, and their answers are much different from Mr. Allen's. They are UAWs, and UA, UAWs, especially high-income producers, work to spend, not to achieve or become financially independent. UAWs life view life as a series of trade-ups from one level of luxury to the next. So who enjoys working? Who really gets satisfaction from their careers? PAWs or UAWs? In most of the cases we have examined, PAWs love working, while a large proportion of UAWs work because they need to support their conspicuous consumption habit. Such people and their motives offend Mr. Allen. He stated numerous times, money should never change one's values. Making money is only a report card. It's a way, of, it's a way to tell how you're doing. No Rolls Royce, please. Mr. Allen is extremely perceptive in his understanding of under accumulators of wealth. In essence, he feels that products change people. If you acquire one status product, you will likely have to purchase others to fill up the socially conspicuous puzzle. Before long, your entire lifestyle will have changed. Mr. Allen clearly understands that the, the, compl the complementary nature of status products and a high consumption lifestyle. He will have none of these artifacts. They are a threat, as he sees it, to his rather simple yet highly efficient lifestyle. Building wealth is not something that will change your lifestyle. Even at this stage of life, I don't want to change the way I live. Mr. Allen's values and priorities were recently tested. Several of those people who Mr. Allen helped stay in business decided to purchase a special birthday gift for him. What a nice gesture, they thought. But status gifts, whether from friends or rich parents, are not always congruent with the recipient's values and lifestyle. And often such gifts place tremendous pressure on the recipients to spend more and more of their incomes to fill in the picture. Some wealthy parents buy their adult children homes in affluent neighborhoods. Great idea. Perhaps they should realize that affluent neighborhoods are high consumption neighborhoods. 
from property taxes to pressure to decorate, from the perceived need to send their children to expensive private schools to the $40,000 four-wheel drive luxury suburban, the children are now on the earth on the earn to spend treadmill. Thanks, mom and dad. But Mr. Allen, the super pa, told us something interesting recently happened. I discovered I was to be given a surprise present from several close business associates, a Rolls Royce for a present. It was ordered for me, special color, special interior. They ordered it about four months before I found out about it. Still had about five months before delivery. How, how do you go and tell somebody who wants to give you a Rolls Royce that you don't want it? Why did Mr. Allen refuse to accept such a marvelous gift? There's nothing the Rolls Royce represents that's important in my life, nor would I want to change, have to change my life to go along with owning the Rolls. I can't throw fish in the back seat of the Rolls like I do right now when I go fishing. I'm going to have to get you all to the lake. I'm out fishing here every weekend. We have some of the best freshwater fishing in the country right out here where I keep my fishing boat. Mr. Allen's type of fishing includes throwing bloody fish in the backseat of his four-year-old full-sized American-made non-luxury vehicle. But such behavior is incongruent with driving a Rolls Royce down to the lake. It would be out of place. Mr. Allen would not feel comfortable with such a vehicle. Thus, he contended he had to change his behavior by ceasing to fish or refuse the gift. Let's consider Mr. Allen's dilemma further. His office is located in, in his manufacturing plant, which is in an old industrial area. An automobile like that, like the one being offered, might well be out of place in such an environment. And of course, Mr. Allen does not want to operate two vehicles. That would be inefficient. Mr. Allen also feels that a luxury car would alienate many of his workers. They would get the feeling that their boss was exploiting them. How else could he afford such an expensive vehicle? There are two considerations as well. With a Rolls, I can't go to some of the crummy restaurants I enjoy going to. Can't drive up a Rolls Royce, so no thank you. And so I had to call and say, I really got to tell you something that I don't want it. It's totally unimportant. There are some things that are more fun to do, more interesting to do than owning a Rolls Royce. Mr. Allen recognizes that many status artifacts can be burdened, if not an impediment to becoming financially independent. Life has its own burdens. Why add excess baggage? Buying cars millionaire style. How do millionaires, uh, how do millionaires go about acquiring motor vehicles? About 81% purchase their vehicles. The balance lease. Only 23.5% of millionaires own new cars. Most have not purchased a new car in the last two years. In fact, 25.2% have not purchased a motor vehicle in four or more years. How much do millionaires pay for these vehicles? The typical millionaire, those in the 50th percentile, paid $24,800 for his most recent acquisition. Note that 30% spend less than $19,500 or less. Also note that the average American buyer of a new motor vehicle paid more than $21,000 for his most recent acquisition. This is not much less than the $24,800 paid by millionaires. Moreover, not all of these millionaires purchase new vehicles. Many, how, how many indicate that their most recent vehicle was used? Nearly 37%. In addition, many millionaires indicated that they traded down recently. That is, purchased lower priced vehicles than they had before. What is the most that the, these millionaires ever paid for their motor vehicles? 50% of the millionaires we surveyed never spent more than $29,900 in their entire lives for a motor vehicle. About 1 in 5 or 20% never spent more than $19,950. 80% paid $41,300 or less to acquire their most expensive motor vehicle. What if we separate out from our sample those millionaires who told us they had inherited their wealth, nearly 14% of the millionaires in our sample. The typical wealth inheritor spent in excess of 36000 for his most expensive motor vehicle. In sharp contrast, the typical self-made millionaire paid much less, approximately 27000 or almost 9000 less than the millionaires who inherited their wealth. Thus, the, Amer the typical American buyer of a new motor vehicle today spends about 78% of what 
the typical self-made millionaire does for the most expensive motor vehicle. You can look at this another way. A typical millionaire in our survey, one of the 50th percentile, spent about 29000 for his most expensive motor vehicle. This equates to less than 1% of his net worth. The average buyer of a motor vehicle in America has a net worth that is less than 2% of that of these millionaires. Do they, do they buy motor vehicles that cost 2% of what millionaires pay? If they did, they would spend on average about $580, 2% of $29,000. Instead, typical motor, motor vehicle buyers spend the equivalent of at least 30% of their net worth for such purchases. Ugh. Note also that on average, American consumers buy new motor vehicles at a price that is 72% of the most that a typical millionaire ever spent on a motor vehicle. Does this give you some idea of why so few Americans are millionaires? Those millionaires who lease vehicles are a minority, fewer than 20%. What was the price of their most recent acquisition lease? We estimate that 50% of lease vehicles that were priced at $31,680 or less. About 80% of lease vehicles valued under $44,500. People often ask us, should I lease? Our answer is always the same. More than 80% of millionaires purchase their vehicles. If and when more than 50% of begin leasing, we will change our recommendation. Makes of motor vehicles. What types of motor vehicles do millionaires drive? U.S. car manufacturers may be pleased to note that their makes account for 57.7% of the vehicles millionaires are driving. Japanese makes about 23% while European manufacturers hold about 18.8%. What makes, what makes of cars are most popular with millionaires? The following are listing, listed in rank order according to their respective market shares. Number one, Ford, 9.4%. The most popular model include the F-150 pickup and the Explorer Sport Utility Vehicle. American Sport Utility Vehicle in general are becoming increasingly popular with the affluent. About three in 10 millionaire Millionaire Ford drivers own F-150 pickups. About one in four drive Ford Explorers. Note that the F-150 pickup is the number one vehicle sold in America. Thus, drivers of pickups have something in common with many millionaires. Cadillac, number two, Cadillac, 8.8%. More than 60% of Cadillac owners drive the DeVille Fleetwood Broham. Number three, Lincoln. About half have Lincoln Town Cars. Number four, a three-way tie, Jeep, Lexus, and Mercedes, 6.4% each. Almost all millionaires who own Jeep choose the Grand Cherokee Sport Utility model. In fact, this model ranks first among all models owned by millionaires. Nearly two-thirds of Lexus drivers choose the LS400 model. The favorite model of Mercedes-Benz is the S-Class. Number five, Oldsmobile. The overall favorite model is the Olds 98. Number six, Chevrolet. 5.6%. 10 different models are represented. The most popular include the Suburban and the Blazer Sports Utility Vehicles. Number 7, Toyota. 5.1%. The Camry model accounts for more than half of this segment. Number 8, Buick. 4.3%. The LeSabre and Park Avenue models were found to be the most popular. Number 9, a two-way tie. Nissan and Volvo. 2.9% each. The most popular Nissan is the Pathfinder sport utility vehicle. For Volvo, it's the 200 series. Number 10, a two-way tie, Chrysler Jaguar, 2.7% each. Other popular makes include Dodge, BMW, Mazda, Saab, Infiniti, Mercury, Acura, Honda, GMC, Volkswagen, Land Rover, Subaru, Pontiac, Audi, Isuzu, Plymouth, and Mitsubishi. The top three manufacturers are General Motors Corporation with approximately 26.7% of the millionaire population, Ford Motor Company with 19.1%, and Chrysler with about 11.8%. As you can see, most millionaires are driving so-called Detroit Metal. Most Americans who own motor vehicles also drive Detroit Metal. How then can you tell if your neighbor who is driving a Ford, a Cadillac, or a Jeep is a millionaire or not? You can't. It's not easy to judge the wealth characteristics of people by the motor vehicles they drive. An increasing number of affluent people are purchasing vehicles per produced by American manufacturers, especially Buicks, Cadillacs, Chevrolets,
Chrysler's, Ford, Lincoln's, and Oldsmobile's. This trend is related to the growing popularity of sports utility vehicles produced by Chrysler, Ford, and General Motors. What is it about Detroit Metal that appeals to the wealthy? We can answer that question by reflecting on something that took place more than 15 years ago. After interviewing a group of 10 millionaires, we, talk, we walked into the parking lot of a research f fac facility. We were surprised to see that almost all of the millionaires we had just interviewed were driving excuse me, full-size full Detroit Metal, including Buicks, Fords, and Oldsmobiles. We looked at each other once. One said, these people are not an, into status. They buy automobiles by the pound. It's true, many American millionaires have a propensity to purchase full-size automobiles that have a low cost per pound. The average per pound for all new motor vehicles is $6.86, $6.86. The full-size Buick four-door sedan currently sells for less than $6 a pound. The Chevrolet Caprice about $5.27 per pound. The Ford Crown Victoria about $5.5. dollars The Lincoln Town Car less than $10 a pound. And the Cadillac Fleetwood $8. $8.26 a pound. The Ford Explorer sells for about $5.98 a pound. The most popular model among millionaires is the Jeep Grand Cherokee, which sells for $7.09 per pound. How, does, how do these costs per pound compare with those of full-size foreign cars? The BMW 740 sedan costs more than $15 per pound. The Mercedes-Benz 500 SL is priced at more than $22 per pound. The Lexus LS is now selling for more than $14 per pound. What about the Ferrari F40? It's $175 per pound. The estimated price per pound for most currently offered motor vehicles is provided in Appendix 2 of this book. Many affluent respondents take joy in driving vehicles that do not denote so-called high status. They are more interested in objective measures of value. Some millionaires do spend considerable dollars for top-of-the-line luxury automobiles, but they are in the minority. For instance, approximately 70,000 Mercedes were sold in the, this country last year. This translates into about one-half or one percent of the more than 14 million motor vehicles sold. In the same time, there were nearly 3.5 million millionaire households. What does that tell us? It suggests that the members of most wealthy households don't drive luxury imports. The fact is that two out of three purchasers or leasers of foreign luxury motor vehicles in this country are not millionaires. Domestic brands have long been in favor with older millionaires. We believe this attitude is becoming more common even among younger millionaires. Why? Because the real growth in the millionaire market continues to come from the entrepreneurial segment. Entrepreneurs, as a rule, are more price sensitive than others when it comes to acquiring motor vehicles. Successful entrepreneurs judge each expenditure in terms of productivity. They often ask themselves the impact heavy spending for motor vehicles will have upon their business's bottom line, man I do that, and ultimately their wealth. More often than not, they determine that investments for such items as advertising and new equipment are much more productive than very expensive motor vehicles. Purchase behavior. What thought and behavioral processes do millionaires go through before buying a car? We have done extensive research on the various types of vehicles buyers that exist among the ranks of millionaires. It seems that rich people differ significantly even among themselves. Studying these various findings reveal valuable information about the attitudes and behaviors necessary to accumulate wealth. There are four distinct buyer types within the millionaire population. Underlying these four types are two fundamental factors. First is dealer loyalty. Some buyers have a proclivity to patronize the same dealer over and over again. In other words, when dealer loyalists want to acquire a motor vehicle, they are inclined to work with the dealer who sold them their last vehicle. About 45.7% of the affluent are dealer loyalists. All other millionaires are shoppers. They account for 54.3% of the population. These people have no desire to patronize the same dealer. They are very aggressive, price-oriented buyers. Often they take months to make their price-related vehicle purchase. The second factor underlying buyer types is the vehicle choice, new or used. 
Among the fluent, 63.4% prefer and buy new cars. The balance, 36.6%, have a very strong proclivity to purchase and use vehicles only. Putting these two factors together produces four types of millionaire car, car buyers. Type 1, new vehicle prone dealer loyalists, 28.6%. Type 2, new vehicle prone dealer shoppers, 34.8%. Type 3, used vehicle prone dealer loyalists, 17.1%. And number 4, used vehicle prone shoppers, 19.5%. That's me. New vehicle prone dealer loyalists, 28.6%. People with this orientation buy new vehicles only and have at least conditional loyalty to a dealer or set of dealers. Most affluent buyers, most affluent people have strong make brand preferences concerning motor vehicles. So when they decide to buy a particular make of vehicle, loyalists already have a dealer in mind. They see certain benefits in buying new vehicles from the same dealer. But this doesn't mean they walk into their favorite dealership, lie down, and roll over. On the contrary, price, even for them, is an important consideration. Perhaps you think these dealer loyalists are lazy. Could they, could, could they be members of so-called idle rich? No, this is not the reason they patronize the same dealer again and again. Perhaps you might speculate that these buyers just like their dealer. Well, affection is not the, the answer either. Quite simply, a new vehicle prone dealer loyalist prefers to minimize their effort in choosing both a dealer and their type of vehicle. New vehicle prone loyalists put a tremendous amount of time and effort into generating their high incomes. They believe there is significantly more money to be gained from working than from going from dealer to dealer or looking for a real buy on a used vehicle. This group patronizes particular dealers because they all also feel that these sellers give them best packages overall. Some of the components of these packages go far beyond the price and physical dimensions of motor vehicles. Why do millionaires purchase new vehicles instead of used ones? Why are they less sensitive to price variations of vehicles than are buyers of used vehicles? First, purchase, purchasers of new vehicles like new vehicles although this is not the only reason they buy them. In their minds, buying new instead of used is much simpler. It requires less time and effort. To them, new vehicles are more reliable and more readily available in the models and colors and with the accessories they demand. In essence, they feel they must pay more to get more. Yet price is somewhat important even for this group. Before they visit their favorite dealer, nearly half, 46%, determine the dealer's cost of a particular model. About one in three contacts at least two competing dealers to get some feel for the impending deal. Some study consumer magazines and other periodicals and price guides that reveal dealer cost figures. Location is another factor in understanding the behavior of this group. Many will contact dealers who are located outside their trade area but most of these contacts are made merely to test local offers. Only one in about 10 patronize out of town dealers repeatedly. There is also another factor that explains the orientation of new vehicle prone vehicle loyalists. More than one, more than one in five patronize dealers who are their clients or customers. Networking is alive and well among the affluent in America. Many wealthy, self-employed business owners believe strongly in reciprocity. Thinking for a moment, if you were, you were a paving contractor, for example, where would you go to buy your vehicles? Would you buy from a stranger with a firm handshake or from the automobile dealer who just gave you a contract to pave his parking lot? The answer should be obvious. Many loyalists who are self-employed professionals, such as physicians, attorneys, CPAs, financial planners, and architects, also believe in this type of this kind of re re reciprocity. The more enlightened one, ones tend to patronize their vehicle dealers who patronize them. It is not at all unusual for the owner of a dealership to have more than 100 different suppliers who provide his business with products and services. Accordingly, there is some expectation on his part 
that these suppliers will return the favor. Many affluent dealer loyalists receive customer referrals from car dealers whom they patronize. In turn, 25.5% of the loyalists in indicate that they refer their associates and friends to selected dealers. The dealers re re reciprocate by giving these significant buyers price discounts on their purchases. Many millionaires are dealer loyal for another reason. About 20% patronize dealerships that are owned by a relative or close personal friend. Many also refer to deal directly with the owner of the dealership they patronize. 37% deal exclusively with the owner. Why? Because they believe this will assure them of getting excellent overall package. New vehicle prone dealer shoppers, 34.8%. The affluent with this orientation believe that the price discounts they get through aggressive shopping and negotiating with multiple dealers are more than worth the time and energy exerted. On average, they have spent 9% less than new vehicle prone dealer loyalists for the most expensive motor vehicle they've ever purchased. On their most recent purchase, they paid about 14% less than the loyalists. Loyalists tend to purchase somewhat more expensive cars, which account for about half the variation in the average prices paid by members of the two groups. In contrast, New vehicle prone dealer shoppers are more sensitive to the price variations of competing dealers. Shoppers are typically experienced negotiators. Many enjoy shopping and haggling. I do not. In contrast with dealer loyalists, dealer shoppers are significantly less likely to patronize dealers owned by the relatives or close personal friends. They refer others to dealers who reciprocate by giving them significant price discounts to purchase exclusively from the owners of dealerships or to buy from dealers who do business with them. On the other hand, they are much more likely to take weeks, even months, to shop around for the very best deal, demand a dealer cost or below cost price, or purchase a new model that is heavily discounted and resell it within a year or two at nearly the same or higher price. Bidding for your business. If you dread the thought of shopping in person for your next motor vehicle, consider an alternative method. Mr. Mark R. Stewart is a friend of ours who has purchased many motor vehicles by visiting competing dealers, but he had never purchased a sports utility vehicle until this year. Although he lacked experience with buying this kind of vehicle, he thought of a way to avoid spending countless hours visiting competing dealers Below is the fax that Mr. Stewart sent to the sales managers of six local area four dealers. Three sales managers responded immediately by faxing their very competitive bids to Mr. Stewart, who accepted one of these. It seems that his past experience as a procure, procurement officer for the U.S. Army was useful in civilian life. Do you have a fax machine or a need for a new sport, need for a new sport utility vehicle? Two, from... Facts, request for quotation. If you are interested in earning my business, please reply to the facts at this is a cash purchase. No trade, subject to sales tax in Blank County. If you do not have this vehicle in stock or on order, I am in no rush and can wait for delivery. Specifications are as follows. Current model year Ford Explorer Limited 4x4. Ivory, saddle leather, options, sunroof, CD player, front license plate bracket. Your quotation should entail the price by, by line item, including tax, tag, title, and any other fees. I look forward to receiving your reply by fax. Please do not call me. If you have any questions, please include them in your fax reply. I will call you if I have any questions. Thanks. Used vehicle prone dealer loyalists. Why do millionaires such as those in this group with annual incomes of excess of $300,000 and net worth of nearly $4 million have to buy used vehicles? They don't. Overall, these millionaires get more satisfaction from acquiring used instead of new. In purchasing cars that are two or three years old, they feel the original owner has paid, has paid while the vehicle was depreciating in value. They often plan to resell their used acquisition in two or three years and recoup much of the initial payout. 
Many also feel the aggressive bargain shopping for new vehicles is a waste of time and energy. They believe that new cars are overpriced at the manufacturer or wholesale level in their minds. Wholesale level. In their minds, one can't even hope to buy a new vehicle for much less than the dealer paid for it. For many, a real discount on motor vehicles can be found in the used vehicle market. Used vehicle prone dealer loyalists have the highest percentage of entrepreneurs among their ranks. Entrepreneurs are extremely price sensitive when acquiring motor vehicles. Their preference to invest much of their income in assets that can appreciate, however, must be balanced with the need for many successful entrepreneurs to drive motor vehicles. For this group, the acquisition of a quality late model used vehicle is the solution. Their favorite makes models include Jeep, Cherokees, Cadillac DeVille, Ford F-150 pickups and Explorers, Lincoln Town Car, Chevrolet Caprices, and Suburbans and Infiniti Q45s. The members of this group spend less money on such acquisitions than do the members of either of the new vehicle prone groups. The percentage of their incomes allocate, allocated for motor vehicle purchases is also the lowest of all of the groups. On average, they spent only 7.6% of their income on their most recent acquisitions and only 9.9% for their most expensive purchase. As a percentage of their net worth, these purchases represent only 0.68 and 0.89% of their net worth respectively. How do the members of this group make purchases, make purchase and dealer patronage decisions? First, most determine the dealer costs on a new model of their preferred vehicle. Then they determine the vehicle's projected depreciation. This information is used to bolster their decision to purchase a used vehicle of their choice model. Information about the current retail and wholesale value of used vehicles is available at many libraries and bookstores. Often, enlightened CPAs provide this information to their clients. Used vehicle prone dealer loyalists then examine the offerings of several dealers. This is, the, this is done to judge the willingness of a local area dealer to earn the business of the member of this group. Some check the prices and vehicles offered by individuals as listed in the classifieds. Often they telephone those listing their vehicle and ask private party sellers if they would, if they would be willing to lower their asking price. In most cases, the callers are just conducting price sensitivity research. The used vehicle prone dealer loyalist use, uses the information he gathers as a bargaining chip in negotiating with his chosen dealer. In most cases, the chosen dealer will meet or beat the prices offered by the so-called competition. Millionaires in this buyer group patronize the same dealer repeatedly. Buyers feel that repeat patronage can earn them price and even service concessions, but this is not the only reason for their loyalty. Like many new vehicle prone dealer loyalists, 36% of used vehicle prone dealer loyalists told us that they buy used cars from dealers who do business with them. Many also patronize dealers who go out of their way to refer customers to them. Remember that this group contains a high concentration of entrepreneurs, self-employed professionals, and very professional sales and marketing types. Obviously, they believe in reciprocity. About one in four acquires his vehicle from relatives or close friends who are in the autom automotive industry. One in three used vehicle prone dealer loyalist makes his purchase by negotiating exclusively with the owner of the dealership. One in five deals exclusively with the top sales professional at a chosen dealership. Such buyers feel that top sales professionals have great leverage in persuading sales managers to agree to sell at low prices.